A lot of people believe that CrossFit is just for young athletic people. I would argue that as we age, CrossFit becomes more important. What we look to do here at CrossFit Chilton is to not just get people to a state of wellness, which is the absence of sickness, but to fitness. Fitness is a strong, resilient, functional human being. And we look at, first of all, the 10 components of fitness to do that. So the 10 components of fitness are strength, cardiovascular and muscular endurance, power, balance, coordination, accuracy, speed, flexibility, and agility. All of these components of fitness will diminish as we age, and they will diminish much more rapidly if we are not training them. Let's look at each of these components and how they are going to affect just our regular daily lives. As we get older, we lose strength. Our muscles will atrophy. So we will get weaker as we get older. And that means that we may struggle with daily activities. We require enough lower body strength to be able to stand up from a chair without using our arms. We require enough upper body strength to be able to push ourselves off the floor if we fall over and enough core strength to be able to rotate from front to back if need be. If you have been training for a long period of time and you are at your peak strength, then as you age, your goal will be to try to slow the rate of decline as much as possible to maintain as much strength as you can for as long as you can into later life. But the great news is that if you are not at your peak strength, you can still increase your strength with training as you age. I've had numerous and I have numerous clients in their 70s and 80s train with me and display improvements in strength year upon year. Because obviously a lot of people haven't trained strength in their life. So when you start giving them some movements that are going to build those muscles and improve their strength, they will see improvements and those improvements will show up in number form in the gym and in lifestyle forms every day when they are just out and about. So we need to improve strength. We need to maintain strength to enable us to maintain these daily activities. We look at cardiovascular endurance as the next component of muscular endurance in there as well. But cardiovascular endurance, obviously our heart and lung health is going to help us be resistant to disease um, and those chronic ailments that come as we get older. Muscular endurance goes alongside that in that it enables you to carry on with your daily activities without getting fatigued from simple tasks. When we look at power, people think about power and they think, I don't need to be sprinting and jumping and all of those things that they associate with powerful exercise. Well, standing up from a chair for some people is a one rep max. And what's a one rep, ma one rep max squat, I should say. What's a one rep max squat? Well, that's involved in power lifting. So it's a power exercise. So we need power. We need power to climb stairs when the, when the steps are particularly high. You know, we do need power in our bodies and climbing a ladder is, is another exercise that will require power and strength. Balance, coordination, accuracy, and agility. We can put those together in that when we are moving around, we require all those things. We need balance to be able to correct ourselves when we're off balance. And the agility, when we need to quickly save ourselves from falling or stumbling. Um, accuracy to make sure that we're able to get the right rung on the ladder as we're climbing those ladders. And the coordination as well goes alongside in, in your movement throughout the day. So just I'm talking about basic tasks that we need as in speed. Training speed will, will prevent us from slowing down and enable us to move fluidly through our daily lives and flexibility. Bit more obvious, but obviously that's going to help our joint health. I put alongside flexibility posture in that we can maintain posture. That's going to help us to prevent injury through our joints and our muscles. And, and, and effectively, a lot of these movements are going to prevent us from being injured um, and getting unwell. So it just makes us a lot more resilient. The problem people have is that they associate a CrossFit workout, and as I said in, in one of my previous videos, with what they see on, on YouTube, and that's not necessarily the case. Well, it isn't the case, not necessarily, it isn't the case. Um, and that we will fit the workouts for each individual person. And that means modifying the movement, modifying the volume, modifying the load, um, 
Well, I think that's the three that I've covered. I'm, I'm sure I've missed something there. So simple examples of how we could change workouts to fit individuals. When we program our, our workouts, when I program our workouts here at the gym, I've always got in mind how we can modify these for every single person, every single circumstance. And obviously we have some very knowledgeable coaches here that can also react on the fly if someone's has an injury or, or something that prevents them moving in a certain way. But if we keep it simple, just let's look at the movements and the workouts that we, can, that we know about in CrossFit and how we can adapt those and how they're beneficial as well for people later in life. So the most well-known workout in CrossFit I would say is Fran and Fran is two movements so it's a couplet and it involves a thruster as you don't know what a thruster is it's when you go fully down into a squat and then press up overhead the great thing about having a thruster is you are training the whole body it's a very compound movement so you're getting a, a really good metabolic effect to that training you're training upper body strength lower body strength you're also training hopefully coordination because you're making sure that you your hips generate some power for you to press overhead and we, we talked about how we need upper body strength we need lower body strength um, and we can simply adapt that by first of all adjusting the load i did that with a pvc pipe and actually that may be a workout for people in themselves for people that struggle to squat because i know that as as I've trained different people, some people will struggle to squat under control. So we would always, you know, recommend something like a box squat where we adjust the height of a bench or a box so that people can sit down and if they have their PVC pipe or their weight, they stand up and they press overhead like so. Very simple variation. So if you gave someone 21 box squats with a PVC pipe as the first round, the next movement is pull-ups. As we get older, I'm talking as we go into the older age category, we may well not have pull-ups and we may well not want people hanging from their body weight unless they've done that for many, many years. We can change that to something as simple as an inverted row where they're holding on, leaning back and pulling either against a barbell, which is secured to the rig or some rings to pull from as well. And it's a really important exercise to train the upper back and the biceps, that the pulling exercise. Posturally, it's really important to make sure that we're training the posterior chain. So the upper back and the shoulders and we're pulling in from here. Obviously your arm strength when you're carrying stuff, biceps are really important to train. And just to build that stability through the upper body. So we have in, uh, in, uh, in Fran, we're covering most of the bases, we're covering lower body strength and we cover upper body pressing and pulling in, in combined with cardiovascular help. And the other thing that people neglect when you're getting older is you, we still have all the same energy systems as we get older. So when we, when we get older, we still have an anaerobic energy system. So we train with the oxygen. We still have an aerobic system. We still have an ATP system and we use those energy systems. So we still need to improve those. So when people say that you know, old people should just be doing walking, well, they're only training one energy system and their other energy systems aren't getting trained and not working through improving their fitness in those areas. Yes, as always, we need to moderate the intensity to suit the individual, but that is very much an individual basis. But we all need to be working through those areas. And this is why when we talk about CrossFit and we talk about high intensity work, moderate intensity work, low intensity, it's relative intensity. So what's high intensity for someone who's a 25 year old CrossFit Games winner and then someone who's an 85 year old person off the street, the intent, relative intensity is going to be completely different. But we need to be training at what is relatively a high, what is relatively a moderate, what is relatively a low intensity for both of those athletes, both of those people. So Fran, very simple workout and it trains the whole body. What about movements such as the Olympic lifts? I mean, should we be training those? I would argue, yes, we should. Um, we don't have to load it up, but what do the Olympic lifts train us? They train our balance. You know, if we're doing a snatch and we've got a PVC pipe, well, first of all, 
you're training mobility because you're going to get someone to work on. I'm going to move in between these benches and these are, are here for a reason. You're seeing it, but you're going to get someone to work on being able to get down nice and low with a neutral spine. So picking something up from the floor. And yes, we've got a wide grip, but that's going to be training our upper back strength. So even just doing with a PVC pipe, we can have that upper back position. We're pulling our shoulder, we're keeping a strong posture and getting down into the, the lowest position where someone can get to and maintain the correct spinal position. We're then training coordination. We're training the ability to use your lower body to create power through, the, through there. And then the accuracy of making sure that bar is staying along the correct plane of movement coordination to make sure the timing is right agility and balance to get that that bar in position overhead all incredibly important also training that shoulder to move through its full what should be its full functional range of motion with all of this what you have to understand is that it's an individual training program so we always look at what the athlete can do. Okay, so some athletes may be limited by a barber. We may get them to use even just a single arm light movement because they can, it gives them a bit more freedom where their arm can go into a position that they can actually achieve. But we want people to be moving their shoulder through all the different ranges of motion. And the reason you want to be doing that is because in life, we can't predict necessarily what will happen with our various joints in in our daily lives and therefore we want to make sure that we're training through all those joint angles those safe joint angles so that when something does come upon us that maybe we're not used to we have trained those muscles and therefore we're not less likely to tear it. i mean people that only train certain muscle groups you know often where do people injure themselves well i've heard of people that injure themselves by pushing their child on a swing or throwing a ball just because they haven't moved their shoulder through that range of motion for for five, 10, 20 years. And then the first time they do it, they tear a, they tear a muscle. So we need to be training through that whole range of motion, through some positions that aren't traditional, aren't basic, and, and especially not just sticking to machine work. I mean, machine work in a gym has its place and has its function, especially for rehabilitation. But if that's all you're doing, it's, it's maybe because your, your coach or whoever's training you isn't knowledgeable enough to be able to comfortably provide you with the correct way to move. And they are scared to put you in positions because they are not knowledgeable enough to, to know that you'll be safe. And that it's a much, it's, I would call it a lazy option to just put you on 10 machines and, and let you push through there. You need to be moving through different ranges of motion because your joints are designed. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the shoulder joint is a, is a ball and socket joint. So it has a 360 degree range of motion and we need to be moving throughout it. If all we're doing is this and this, you know, every day you, you'll end up doing this at one point and that's when you'll end up injuring yourself. You know, what about when you, you know, if you need to a snatch, what about when you reach around to grab your seat belt? Okay, you're moving that shoulder through external rotation, you're grabbing it behind you and you're pulling it. How many people find that really uncomfortable? The snatch trains that motion and like I say, we moderate the load. It can be no load and I've got no problem with that. And it could be a great workout performing, for, you know, Isabel is 30 snatches for time. What about if you perform that with a PVC pipe with someone and just worked on making sure they were moving perfectly through that. And not only that, but they were, the, they were then, when they were catching the bar, they were making sure they're coming underneath that so their hips move backwards. They come into a nice squat position. They're landing on their feet. All of those elements are hugely beneficial for your daily life for your ability to be resilient. If you've got someone doing those movements really well, I can guarantee they're going to move well when they're going to pick up their shopping. So really, really important. We can go to other extremes. I mean, obviously CrossFit involves ring work. And yes, we wouldn't want to put people through unstable you know, rings unless they were adequately trained to do so. But the use of those unstable movements, we can apply variations of, of ring work with more stable surfaces. And there's a practical application to everything that we do. So say for example, let's go to the extreme, okay? An exercise that maybe for some people might seem unnecessary. We've got a muscle up. A muscle up, if you don't know what a muscle up is, 
um, let me put this pipe down, it's a movement in which you pull yourself on a set of rings or on a bar, you pull yourself from the bottom of a pull-up, up, bring yourself over the top of those rings or that bar, and then press out so you finish on top with your hands down by your waist and you're over the top of the bar there. You see it in gymnastics. Uh, it's one of the sort of or more basic moves in gymnastics. Well, I've got these two benches here because effectively a muscle up requires the same function as getting up into the loft if your ladder isn't quite high enough or even more simply, let me show you, getting out of a bath because here I am in my bath like so. My feet are soaped up, it's a bit slippery in here and I need to get out of my bath. Well, the muscles that my shoulders can go into, sorry, the movement of my shoulder we're going to could be, you know, extension here and I'm going to press up and out. And there we have effectively a muscle up position. I've gone from underneath here, lying down on my back, driving up, pressing up and over, and then standing up and out. So I'm going to extremes there. I'm trying to, you know, justify using a muscle up. But there are functions to even something like a muscle up. And you could have a workout where you had some variation of that for someone to get up and out. And they would be performing a CrossFit workout with some of the more extreme variations of movements that we apply. Not only is it functional, but it's also fun. It's interesting. It's stimulating. And, and we, we often overlook in the physical training how important the mental side of this is. And I love training skill work because learning those new skills, those new movements is really important for your brain because your brain, if you're learning new skills, is again, it's going to grow, it's going to improve. Um, you're going to fire up some more neural pathways. It's impre incredibly important for your mental health. And we want to be, you know, mentally fit as well as physically fit as we age. So just coming to the gym and doing the very basics, the very boring stuff and thinking, okay, yep, yeah, that's all you're going to do because you're over a certain age is patronizing and it's not as beneficial as if we add some more stimulating workouts. And what about if we start to add in, you know, some people might think, oh, it's really interesting to see PRs and it would be motivating for them to have that and to be able to see that improvement. Because I think life doesn't end when we get to 60, 70, 80. It still carries on and we still want to be able to develop and grow. And some people might be comfortable and just happy to just come in and train every day. But they still want to be interesting and stimulating and um, see some benefit to it. We still have the same needs as we age. So it's really important that we apply some some different thoughts into when we're training. And that's why I believe that CrossFit is super important as we age and shouldn't be overlooked as a training methodology. What is important though, is that you are coached by great coaches. I, we always advise people come in and do some one-to-one -one stuff before they start because it allows the coach to see you and see what your capabilities are and be able to manage that and, and modify it even more directly than they could do in a group environment. But my message to anyone is, if you want to be healthier as you get older and be functional and enjoy and have a better quality of life and look amazing as you age, be those guys that can, you look at them and you think, wow, I wish I was like that when I'm older. I wish I am like that when I'm older. Come and train CrossFit style workouts just make sure that you have great guidance in how you're going to do that because the only way people go wrong when they come and do crossfit is they just throw themselves at it without getting the right advice and listening to themselves and to their coaches but if you do that you will see amazing benefits so don't rule out crossfit let's get stronger healthier and happier as we age hope you enjoyed that video if any of you have any questions about best ways to improve your quality of life, I am happy to help. I hope you're enjoying everything that I'm putting out there. I'm going to be releasing these videos into a podcast series very soon, including the backdated episodes so that you can listen to this on the go. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. Those of you that are going to be listening on the podcast in the future. 
and I shall speak to you all very soon.